Welcome to Faith Walk, another edition presented by Church Street Church of Christ, Lewisburg, Tennessee. My name is Don Ledford, and it is a privilege and honor to be with you. Today, I want to spend just a few minutes on uh, a, a, a scripture in Matthew 7, verses 15 through 16. And in this uh, particular passage of scripture, Matthew records for us Jesus's words as it pertains to false prophets or false teachers. Listen to uh, what Matthew says. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? The Bible is filled with scriptures that advise us to be aware, to be on our guard, to watch for false prophets, false teachers, those who those people who teach something other than the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you you know that Paul in uh, Galatians chapter one, uh, about verse uh, six, I believe it is. Uh, he talks about those people who teach any other gospel but the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let them be accursed. Again, pretty terse words and a warning for someone who teaches something other than the gospel of Jesus Christ for our salvation. I want you to think about this for just for, just for a second and, and see if, if you see the parallel. Suppose uh, a school system interviewed uh, a teacher for a job, a math position, and that individual was hired. And then as the school year began and, and parents uh, began to see homework that was being brought home and, and children's uh, interaction with the teacher and what was being taught, and, a, and parents learned that that teacher was teaching two plus two equal five. Parents would absolutely come unglued. Why? Well, that's a false doctrine. Any parent knows, and they learn this from a very young age, that two plus two equal four. And so for a teacher to teach something other than that principle, it would be a false doctrine. To say the least, that teacher wouldn't last long. Parents would not have that teacher continuing to teach their children a false doctrine. Time does not permit our looking at all of the scriptures that pertain to false doctrines or false teachers or false prophets. But I want to mention a few, and I, and I hope you'll take time to take a look at those. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 3 through 5, uh, we are to be aware and look for false prophets. Paul warned Timothy, be aware there will be false prophets that will come. Acts 20, verses 28 through 30, Paul warns the uh, elders at Ephesus to be aware of false, do uh, false doctrine, false teachers that would penetrate the church at Ephesus. And he also warned that some of you elders will, will part from the gospel of Jesus Christ. 2 Peter 3, verses 14 through 18. Be on your guard and not carried away by false teachers. 1 John 4, verses 1 through 6. John says, do not believe every spirit, but test them. John's saying it's okay to listen to folks, but if what they are teaching is not uh, a copy or uh, a template that we find in the New Testament for the gospel of Jesus Christ, then you need to get rid of it. In Colossians, uh, Paul talks to, writes to the church at Colossae, 
And it seems that the church at Colossae had tried to blend uh, several religions into the gospel of Jesus Christ. They tried to take uh, Jewish law, Jewish custom, uh, Judaizing teachers, as they are referred. They had tried to take the uh, Oriental or Far East uh, religion and blend it with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they'd also had tried to take asceticism, a, a form of religion which which believes that in order to serve Christ, we have to harm ourselves. They believed, or the Colossian church, was headed in the direction of diluting the gospel of Jesus Christ. And certainly Paul was addressing this in, in, a, in a very uh, spiritual manner and in a proper way to correct that the Colossian church was headed in the wrong direction. And so as we look at these passages, we can see that in first century, false teachers, false prophets, those who wanted to water down the gospel of Jesus Christ, it was a problem in first century, and it can be a problem and is a problem in our world today. So, so how do we counteract this? Well, obviously, the, the Bible is our source of information. Again, let me reiterate the point that as we listen to those people who teach the Bible, who teach us things that God would be saying to us or is saying to us, let's be sure that as we listen, as John told uh, his followers or those in the first century, uh, test every spirit. Uh, do not believe every spirit, but test it and be sure that it is in uh, compliance or in agreement with what the gospel of Jesus Christ and uh, let us not forget what Paul told the churches in Galatia. Anybody that's teaching something other than the gospel of Jesus Christ for our spiritual needs, let them be accursed. Would you join me in prayer? Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the Bible. We do thank you, Heavenly Father, that your word speaks to us today just as it did in first century. Father, we pray that you would help us to recognize false prophets, false teachers, those who would teach something other than the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you that you love us. We thank you that you gave your son Jesus the Christ for our sins. And Father, we thank you that Jesus established his church and we can be a part. Father, we thank you again that you hear us and we pray that you would bless our nation. We ask you to continue our healing. And Father, as we live and go about our daily task, we pray that we will always be a reflection of Jesus Christ and teach nothing but what Jesus has authorized and given us. Father, we offer this prayer in your son's name, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I hope you have a great rest of the day. May God bless you all.